I'm Cora, and welcome to my podcast, Filmmaking Actually. Ta da! <laughs> For this episode, I wanted to talk a little bit, okay, a lot of bit, <laughs> about some important things to keep in mind when pitching. I originally wanted to do this for screenwriters because we get a lot of writing pitches, but we also get more like project pitches as well. So I figured I would just include those for everybody. How do you pitch your project actually? As most of you know, I'm the president of Space Dream Productions and I work running my company, overseeing the projects that we work on and all that stuff. Um, my husband, Spaceship, is my main business partner and we get pitched a lot. They usually go to my assistant who checks them out, forwards me the gist, and then replies to them. Unfortunately, the replies pretty much are the same thing over and over. It usually is just clarifications and requests for more information because the pitch was missing some vital pieces. Instead of continuously having to say the same things over and over, I figured we would record a podcast episode that we can just be like, we can just say, here's some helpful advice on how to pitch. Um, or hopefully people maybe have heard this episode before they reach out to us. I'm just going to dive right in. First and most important is what do you have and what do you want from me? <laughs> the vast majority of the like quote unquote pitches that we get, unfortunately, are a little bit like a cat bringing a dead lizard. Like here, I killed this script for you. That's great. Um, but what do you want me to do with it? <laughs> um, okay, now that may seem a little harsh, so let me back up. If you've listened to my first two episodes on how to make a movie and what intentional filmmaking is, you know that having some sort of idea in mind on what you're trying to do with the project in the first place is really important. And that's what intentional filmmaking is. Having some sort of intention or goal in mind for the project and working towards that with coordinated efforts in the direction of attaining that goal. <laughs> on paper. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, that's basically what it is. So, okay, you have a script. Maybe you have a developed project or a partially developed project. That's awesome. What do you need from me, from us, from Space Dream? I wish that I had like a, a checklist. This is what to fill out. But the thing is, we could have 10 writers pitch 10 scripts or 10 filmmakers with 10 stories, and they all have different things that they want. So it's not just, oh, well, I'm here pitching. You should know what I want. N no, you have to tell me <laughs> what is it that you're looking for? You know, are you looking to sell it? I get the rights, you get the money and that's it. We're done. I can go off and do whatever I want by way of rewrites or adaptations and I can make it however I want. Or are you looking to get it funded and get it made? In which case, like, are you looking to hold on to some sort of creative role through further development and production? Are you looking to be a producer or a director or an actor or actress or all of the above? I will go more into funding projects, both a little bit later in this episode, but also in a whole other episode, because that's a whole other topic of conversation. What are you looking to do with this? You know, are you looking to direct it? Are you ready to just make the whole thing yourself and you just need the money to do it? Did you already make it and you need distribution? What do you need for whatever's next in your project? I cannot tell you how many times we get emails or LinkedIn messages or Facebook messages, or even just randomly somebody comes up and they're like, oh, I've got a script that I wrote. It's an amazing story. End of information. And you know, that's why I use the dead lizard analogy. I'm sure the cat is rightfully very proud of the lizard and, you know, thinks it's going to be of great value for me. I've heard that cats uh, think humans can't hunt, so they hunt for us. They're trying to help. <laughs> they see us as children who don't hunt. So, um, you know, the cat's really happy. They have this great opportunity. They really want to share it. But I don't speak cat <laughs> and I can't read minds. So, if you're presenting a project or a script and you're giving it to a production company or to a director or even to an investor, be really specific about what you want. And if you just want money, that's totally okay. Just say that. You know, nobody likes dancing around the bush for 50 hours of back and forth to hear, we're just looking for cash. Great. You're looking for cash. Open with that. It saves everybody time. I will be super transparent as far as pitching to Space Dream. We do not randomly fund projects. Honestly, I don't know of any production companies with production lines in place that do actual film production themselves that just hand over the money to make a movie and they have no involvement at all with the creative process whatsoever and no creative control over the project. They just give you the money and walk away. So if you're looking for investments, you probably want to speak with investors, not production companies, just 
you know, possible thing to look into. I will also say that getting a project greenlit, uh, fully funded, even at a big studio, is a lot of work. You can't just walk around expecting someone to just do that work for you. If you want a film funded, you need to have a business plan and a whole lot of other things in place that, unfortunately, I'll go over in another episode because it is a lot. But yeah, for pitching, (laughs) pitching and being clear about what you need does not have to be super complicated. It can be something like, hi, I have a script I recently completed that's looking for funding so I can get it produced with my production partner. Or I'm interested in presenting this script for option. And for option basically means that someone comes along and gives you anything from a dollar to a few thousand dollars and they own the rights temporarily while they try to get it funded so they can get it made. If they do get it funded, you then get paid and all of the rights uh, are fully bought from you at that point. If they don't get it funded at any point and they haven't met certain production criteria for an extension on the option, the option ends and all the rights transfer back to you. Um, If there was development done on the film after they owned the option, usually the rights to the work before the development was done goes back to you. Um, And they can't use the developed work because it's based on your work. Whole other conversation. Anyway, um, there are also things called a shopping agreement, which basically gives someone the right to shop your script to producers or investors to get it funded to get made. So for that, they're not the ones that are going to make it. They're going out to find the money, basically. Those are very different agreements, and that's why it's important to know for yourself, what do you want? What kind of agreement should you enter into? If you want someone to find the money and get it made, that's more of a shopping agreement. If you want someone to get it made, that's more of an option agreement. If you want to be creatively involved in the process of getting it made, that would probably either be some sort of modified option agreement with a partnership addendum or some sort of agreement attaching you in another creative role, like a director or a producer or something like that. I'm not a lawyer. That's not legal advice. You should speak to an entertainment lawyer for your specific situation. But I will say one thing that is really hard and really important to know about being a writer and also about being a director or being a producer or being an actor or even being a film editor, those jobs are different roles. At the end of the day, bringing the story to life is the sole responsibility of the director And depending on the way it's set up, sometimes under the management of the producer, who, if they trust the director, will give the director the creative freedom to do their job and really be the keeper of the story. Everyone working with the director is supposed to be forwarding the director's vision while being collaborative, and a good director values creative input and collaboration while being able to hold on to their vision and not end up with too many cooks spoiling the soup situation. All of that to say, if you are a writer with a script you want to get made, be really honest with yourself about if you actually just want to cash out and walk away with a writer's credit, or even a based on credit, depending on rewrites, or do you have an exact vision that you want full creative control over, in which case you probably are actually wanting to be the director and you want to have creative control over the execution of the story. I was approached by a writer once who wanted to attach me as a director to the project. They were applying for either a grant or a contest or something, and they needed to have a certain number of people in place. It was a very interesting story. I was interested in the project. I helped them as a producer put together their budget and stuff like that. Um, I agreed you know, to be attached as the director. They went ahead and entered. I think it was a finalist for that contest. But as I was working with them, they really had such a meticulous vision I could see that I didn't really have space to bring my voice as the director. They didn't really need a director. They needed somebody who knew how to do what they didn't know how to do. I don't know if that made sense. (laughs) Um, But they needed that person to like fill in the holes and kind of be a little bit of a puppet executing their vision, which is fine. There are some directors, they just want the paycheck. They don't mind. They'll do that. I am way too creatively involved and I I can't work like that personally. It's not a good fit for me and I know that person's going to be miserable working with me down the line. I had a conversation with them about it. I thoroughly encouraged them to direct it and I think they'll do a great job. I uh, was speaking with another person on another project where, you know, they weren't sure what to do with the project and they were kind of trying to figure out, you know, getting a new director, getting all these things. And in talking to them, they clearly knew the story and they clearly understood what had to happen to get it made. I just gave them a little bit of mentorship as a director, um, stepped back, let them work their magic. It was their first time directing a film and they were entering a contest. They swept. They won literally everything. I think I think they even won more awards than we did <laughs> at that contest. They were in a different category than we were. You know, they won best picture, best director, like all of these things. 
because they really knew what they were doing and the story was so in their heart, they were the best person to tell it. Be honest with yourself as the writer. Is this something that if you do not see exactly what you envisioned in your head when you were writing those pages, it's going to be a devastation for you? Or is this something that you're totally happy sending it on down the production pipeline and passing it off to the hands of people who are maybe going to make a character look away you hadn't imagined them looking? I'm not talking about major changes as far as like, you know, race or whatever. I'm just talking about like, maybe you envision somebody in a green pea coat and they put them in a sweatsuit. I don't know. But I'm just saying there's so many details that go into making a film. It's really important before you even begin to let go of your script to figure out where you see yourself in that pipeline because that's, it's just so important. So all of that to say, if you are a writer with a script you want to get made, be really honest with yourself. If you're just writing as a way to make money and if you write enough scripts and get in good with studios who option things all the time that maybe never get made, you could probably live off the option prices and never get a single movie made but make a living. And if that's what makes you happy, hey, go for it. I will say if you're looking for like a five to six digit option price, you probably shouldn't be pitching to indie film studios because we don't drop that kind of cash on an option. Um, if we're going to put that much money into a film, we're either developing it as a feature already or, you know, if it's a smaller project, we're funding it. <laughs> for writers, knowing what you want to do with the script, that should be the very first thing you do before you even start to pitch. Um, and as a filmmaker, you know, are you bringing a project you want to direct? Are you bringing a project you want funded? Are you bringing a project that's already made? It needs to be distributed. It needs to be better edited. Like being aware of where your project is and what you need. You have to have that before you pitch. Otherwise, you don't really have your pitch defined. Like what are you pitching? You need to have more than the script or more than the story. You need to be able to say what you want from the person you're pitching to. On the other side of that, obviously, you don't just walk into a room or email inbox and say, I want this from you. If you've heard my networking episode, you know that the best networking and connections mean having something to offer. Um, maybe what you are offering is the next great Star Wars or Harry Potter series, or you're going to launch an entire franchise. That's totally possible. But don't tell me that this is the most amazing script I've ever read and I have to read it. No story like this has ever been told. If you have to put that in your pitch, unfortunately, I already don't believe you. And that's kind of a harsh to say, but the work needs to speak for itself. Also, I really hate to say this because I know I'm really proud of the awards we've won, but you can't just send over 50 accolades and be like, see, I'm good enough. Send me money now. One of the most important conversations I've ever had as far as like molding my outlook on my career was uh, with a friend of ours at Sundance who literally had just won an Emmy. And he was like, you know, honestly, I expected after I won an Emmy that I wouldn't have to be like actively engaging looking for clients. I would just have like work falling in my lap. And he's like, yeah, no, he's still out there pitching, looking for clients, connecting, networking, especially because once you move into that world, like now you've won an Emmy, well, there's people who've won five or 10 or 20. I know people with Grammys and Telly Awards and all that. If they aren't continually keeping up with their craft, eventually even they fade away. As the saying goes, never rest on your laurels and never feel like your laurels are just there giving you permission to exist. <laughs> um, if anything, for me, I know the awards we've won are a standard that I have to live up to. Multiple best director awards means I better consistently be upping my game and being a better and better director and living up to that. Use your awards as benchmarks on the ladder that you climb and not as proof or as something to kind of like defend your position. The work really, really, really should speak for itself. When it comes to pitching, look at it this way. If you went to a restaurant and you ordered a meal and before the food comes out, before you can even smell it, anything, the cook comes out and is standing there explaining to you how you're going to love this meal and it's so good. And everyone else who's eaten this meal before you said they loved it and it's better than their grandmother's cooking. And I don't mean like, you know, a short introduction by like a sommelier in a fancy classy restaurant. Um, someone noting how the notes in a certain wine pair well with a certain part of the food or something like that, kind of like augmenting it. I mean, like somebody just standing there explaining it all to you when you probably, if you were interested, you just wanted to eat the food. That's how it should be with pitches. Just let the person being pitched eat the food. The work really should speak for itself. 
And you may be like, but it's so hard to get my script actually read or to get my film watched or to get anybody to click on the link. You're right, it is. And honestly, most places won't even accept a pitch, let alone the entire script. The reason for that, unfortunately, is lawsuits. <laughs> um, that's a whole other conversation. But no one likes getting sued because someone once pitched a film project to them that happens to be similar to a totally disrelated other film project that they're doing. And on the other side of that, no one likes watching people make millions off of their ideas when it really was their idea and it straight up was stolen. Um, studios shouldn't steal work, but that's a whole other conversation. So that's one of the reasons behind why it's so hard to kind of get your materials in front of someone. So with all of that downer information, how do you pitch? First, your logline. That really is it. You know, the elevator pitch, that one to two minute, here it is. We just did a writer's workshop. I'll do a little plug here. Um, it's available on our Patreon, uh, Space Dream Films on Patreon. The audio portion of the moderated discussion will be uh, our next podcast episode. But um, the first part of the panel was actually going over log lines from submissions from writers who are in the audience. You can see that whole part in the video on Patreon. For what it's worth, I'm not trying to like sell something massive here. It's $1.99 <laughs> to access Patreon. We're trying to be fair while also having sustainability to support the work involved on creating panels like that, which we want to keep doing. You can hear the discussion portion of that next week, and you can also see the entire thing. And if you want to get more information on the log lines, that part is on Patreon. I will say your log line should be the most interesting thing about your project. It should have all the meat and potatoes and gravy right there. In marketing, there's a term, sell the sizzle, not the steak. The log line should be pure sizzle. For example, one of the log lines that was submitted, uh, and you can hear the full breakdown, I'll give a little gist of it here. One of the log lines was about a boy and a father and a daughter's obsession. It was, you know, it was a little bit more information than that, but that, that was the, the gist. Okay, great. When we had all the panelists kind of vote on the different log lines that were submitted, you know, how interested are they in, in talking about it or breaking it down? That one scored kind of mediocrely. We had the writer give a little bit more information about the project before, you know, we gave any feedback on the, on the log line. The project was a documentary. The boy was the writer's father and she was the daughter. Totally changes it, right? If I'm like a boy and a father, whereas opposed to if I'm like my obsession with a mystery from my father's past immediately a little bit more intrigue there there was more information about it but it's already been being filmed she's been filming for 35 years what trying to solve this mystery from her own family history that sounds way more interesting right i mean the panel and i were blown away when we got that ad additional information don't make your log line sound like just another cool log line out of the how to write a log line cliff notes in a race against time this person is trying to do this thing can they Will they make it? We've all read that log line 75 billion trillion million times. Tell the heart of your story in your log line. Knock our socks off, then get our attention to hear more about the project. That's, that's how you start the conversation is with a really, really powerful log line. Once you've got the attention, then you need to be prepared with more information. What do you need from us? Where does the project stand? What are you looking for? Um, if you want funding, you really should have a breakdown and budget done. Don't tell me the movie, oh, it could be made for this much money. Literally, unless you have a full breakdown and budget done, you're just pulling numbers out of the air. I mean, even if it's an educated guess, it's still a guess. If you want to say the cost of the film, you should have some solid information substantiating that. That's a whole other conversation on film funding. Again, that'll be a later episode. You know, if you, if you say this film, oh, it's a, a $3 million movie. Oh, okay, that's a kind of higher, higher low end. You know, I'm curious what about it makes it $3 million. This is a $500,000 movie. Okay, from what you've told me, I have no idea how you're doing this for $500,000. So you better be able to explain that. Like somebody who is familiar with film production and knows what it takes to make a movie and fairly pay people and all of that stuff, they're going to want to know a little bit more than just, oh, we can make this for 10 grand. No feature can get made for 10 grand if people are actually getting paid. And if it is for 10 grand, you're going to have a lot of deferred pay and there's like no profit that's going to be made because, yeah, that's a whole, whole other conversation. But anyway, yeah, have a budget, have a breakdown, have something substantiating the numbers that you're throwing around. 
do you have any talent attached or is there any talent interested? Do you have a director attached? Do you have distribution interest in place? You don't have to have those things. They do kind of help. And either way, it's vital information to include. Yes, we have this. No, we don't. We're just starting. All I have is a script. Here's the information, blah, 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 blah. And then anything else we should know about the project? Why are you pitching to us specifically? You know, if you're pitching to Space Dream, what about Space Dream Productions or me or Spaceship or anyone on our team makes you think that we are the right fit to collaborate with you on bringing this to life? Is it just that you've seen we make movies so you assume we can make your movie? Uh, making movies is a lot of work. <laughs> we only make movies that, you know, resonate with us, that connect with us, that have a story that means something. So what about this film is a good fit for us? And what about Space Dream is a good fit for you? That's all really important. Um, and again, we don't fund films just randomly. So if you're just looking to sell it, we're probably not a good fit, unfortunately. I will say when you're starting to reach out to people, do not guess someone's email and just slide into their box. It doesn't make you cool. It doesn't make you look good. Honestly, it kind of makes you look a little annoying. Executives have enough to deal with during the day and their inbox is usually already pretty full. <laughs> if you don't trust their assistants, then you probably shouldn't be engaging with them because you will forever need to deal with their assistants if you end up working with them. People who slide into my uh, inbox, full disclosure, they get redirected to my assistant. My assistant replies and their email address gets blocked from my address. I never actually even see their pitch. The reason for that is we have something like six different social media channels, plus a website, plus several very public email addresses all set up so people can reach us. If you slide into my inbox directly, what that tells me is either you don't trust my staff, like you think someone's just going to bounce you without giving you any sort of respect or reply, or you don't trust how our company is set up and you don't think that those emails or web forms or anything go anywhere. And you think that if you actually use those established lines to reach out to us, either you won't be handled correctly or you're going to vanish into cyberspace, which basically tells me you don't trust how I run my company because that would be a crap way to manage things. There are about a dozen different ways to reach out to us. You can even schedule a free consultation if you want to just talk about your project literally for free. It's not a sales pitch. It's directly with me. We just go straight. Hey, how's it going? What do you need? How can we help you? It's on our website under the services tab. You click a button, you sign up, you get sent a Calendly link. My assistant hooks you up with an appointment. You jump on a video call with me and we talk about whatever it is you want to talk about for film. That's open to anybody. You don't have to guess my email and jump in and try to circumvent all the people who have jobs to do. That helps me have the time to focus on the things that I have to focus on when they can be doing their jobs. So yeah, if a website says we do not accept pitches, don't pitch to them. If somebody says reach out to this email address, reach out to that email address. Respect the company that you're reaching out to, especially if you're expecting them to respect you in return. It's a world of mutual, mutual trust here. All right. Another thing to keep in mind is start a conversation before sending like a 10,000 page diatribe in every detail of your project. One, people are busy. They don't have time to read a hundred page information sheet. Um, all of that stuff ends up going to my assistant anyway. They are extremely busy. <laughs> um, and you want to get someone's attention, give them the vital information, and then start a conversation. That's the reason for the log line. Maybe include a sentence or two more of general information. But remember, when you walk up to someone to pitch, they are Jon Snow. They know nothing. They don't know who you are. They don't know anything about the project. They, they're literally starting from zero. And the mind can only assimilate so much information at once. Start with a very simple, hi, hello, say something about why you're reaching out to that company or say something about that project as far as like why that brand is a good fit and you know what they have to offer. Um, and be sincere, be genuine, actually look them up. I'll never forget I got an email fairly recently actually from somebody who had uh, looked at our website and felt like uh, we would be a really good fit for them and they could help us uh, generate content. And I was like, you clearly did not <laughs> look at our website because literally our entire services page is all about how we generate content for people. And we're a film production studio. That's literally what we do. So um, yeah, that that was a that was a good laugh for, for our marketing team. <laughs> but uh, if you're going to reach out to someone, be genuine, actually look them up, see if they are a good fit, see if there's a reason to connect with them and articulate that reason. Mention the project, very short gist, ask if they would like more information. Then you can send over more. 
But even then, save your screenplay and the whole long synopsis and all of that for further discussion. On our end, we actually have to destroy stuff like that that comes in without reading it because of copyright risks. So like if you send us a script, we won't even open it. We'll just delete it and then we'll notify you that it was deleted unless we're under an NDA or some sort of uh, non-disclosure agreement or some sort of other disclaimer has been made and agreed to protect both sides because protecting your work is important too. Having a pitch deck or a one sheet or something like that that says a little bit about the project, where it stands, who's involved, what you need next, what you're looking for from the person you're talking to, that's also super useful. You can include that in the first email like as an attachment, but keep it simple. When you're first starting that initial contact, just start the conversation first. Think of it as if you were sending a train you need to have tracks for the train to go on. So get the tracks laid, you know, make sure that they're level and flat and the tie lines are all in place and then send the train. No matter what the, you're gonna do this for me vibe will never get you anywhere. This is a professional field, so be professional. I will say, just because a lot of that is a lot of, don't do this, don't do that. <laughs> um, we've had some incredible people reach out to us over the years. We've had, hey, we've got a story, you know, would you like to check it out? They tell me a little bit about it. I get interested. We set up a basic agreement. I read it. Um, Comic Relief came in that way. We optioned that from a writer who had just won an award, actually. We, uh, Christmas in Sugarland came in the same way. Nine tenths of the law came through a consultation. The author wanted to know more about turning a book into a movie and had been told, hey, this could be a good movie. They were absolutely right. It definitely could be. And we loved it. So we ended up optioning it. Uh, Dancing Beyond came in the same way. Um, someone came in, they had a story. They thought maybe it would be a good fit for us. They said, why? And they were right. <laughs> um, it was a story we were totally interested in. It's, it's not that, you know, oh, you can never pitch or you can't do, but it's, it always starts the conversation. It starts with a little bit of interest. Here's the gist. This is what I'm looking for. It starts with a conversation of, I've said that like six times. I think it starts with a conversation. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to, to make sure I accentuate the good along with everything else. Have the following put together before you start to pitch. Title the log line, the genre, and what you're looking for on the project. When you pitch, send us the title and the log line and the genre, but not the synopsis or the script or the 50,000 page document. Okay. Or even the, 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 the one page document, you know, outlining why this is so important or everything. You should be able to sum up the crux of it in a sentence or two. Some kind of vital information that is also important to include is where are you located? Maybe where you're looking at filming, if that's already a part of the project. For scripts, are you the writer? Are you just the writer? You know, are you looking to sell this or are you looking to be a part of the production team on set and throughout production? Obviously, you know, writers have rights on set and all of that stuff and that all gets, you know, determined in the contract when it gets optioned and when it gets sold. But what is your involvement and what are you expecting from production? That's really important to include. Um, if it's a film project, what is your role in the film project? Where does it stand? If there's an estimated budget, what is that budget? What is that budget based on? Um, is it funded? Is it partially funded? Are you securing funding? There's lots of ways to do that. You know, crowdfunding, grants, fiscal sponsorships, investors, self-funding, uh, something called in-kind services. That's a whole other conversation. Is there any name talent already attached or are they interested or accessible? Like, oh, you know, I've got a connection with this person and I'm sure they'd love to talk about it once it's ready to be pitched or whatever. Um, and that goes for in front of or behind the camera. You know, maybe you've got a name director or director of photography or something like that. Most importantly, how do you envision the person you're pitching to involved in the project? What do you want from them? Um, be really clear about that up front and also include anything else relevant that they should know about the project. This can be very, very to the point, very simple kind of bullet points. It shouldn't be some big, massive email. Imagine you're running a company, you're doing 50 million things, you've got your phone going off, you just finished one meeting, you got 20 minutes to answer your emails before your next meeting, and you open it up and there's like this massive wall of text with five attachments and three video links. You don't have time to look at that. And you're gonna send it to the assistant who is already catching all of those other things that that executive doesn't have time to check at that exact moment, give them just a little bit. You know, I get a super interesting logline or something that is really interesting 
You've got my attention. Now I'm ready to have a conversation, even if it means scheduling that conversation down the road. That's that's how you get your foot in the door. You with your foot, <laughs> not with an entire train. Um, all right. So yeah, having that first outreach, being more of an introduction, so important. Be a human being. <laughs> um, remember that you're talking to other human beings. Be genuine. Be you. Let your story speak for itself. Don't you know, feel like you've got to check boxes or, you know, check tropes or check whatever, like something about this story is important. Say that. You're a human being with thoughts and and passion and, and feeling behind this project. Say that. Say what about this story is so exciting to you? What about this is so important? At the end of the day, let the story speak for itself, whether it's a finished film or a log line, or a script idea, or whatever it is. I hope this helps you make some more meaningful connections and better pitch your projects and your work. Good luck out there. It really is a world of endless possibility. I know I was all like, don't do this, don't do that. But the reason why I said that is because it's like, okay, good, don't do that, fine. Sweep all that stuff aside, focus on everything else. You got this. All right, that's it. Bye. <laughs>